Good evening, dear educators. On behalf of Kriti Prakashan Private Limited, I, Dr. Farzana Shakil Ali, welcome you all to this learning journey with Urja Pedagogy Enhancement Program, an initiative of Kriti Prakashan Private Limited. Kriti Prakashan Private Limited is a Lucknow-based publishing company which began its operation in the year 2000. Having firm faith in its motto, that is shaping nations through education, the company has spread its wings of knowledge, pan-India and abroad, during its journey of 21 glorious years. Apart from publishing quality content for children, our vision statement also includes updation of teachers and educators by empowering them through capacity building workshops and trainings twice a year. Our initiative Urja Pedagogy Enhancement Program focuses on empowering educators in teaching pedagogies in alignment with National Education Policy 2020, learning outcomes by NCERT and Bloom's taxonomy. We are glad to share that our Urja training series for the session 2021-22 is ongoing and it started on July 15th of July 2021. It will continue till 7th of August and it will also include pedagogy of teaching in early childhood years and that is the new curriculum early childhood care and education. What I strongly believe is that if you want your students to learn, then everyone in the school must continue to learn. And in the Urja series, today we have capacity building workshop on teaching pedagogy of English to middle school students. We have with us our resource person for the day, Mrs. Sagorika Banerjee. I welcome you, Mrs. Sagorika Banerjee, to today's training webinar, I must say. Mrs. Sagorika Banerjee is an educationist, a CBSC school principal with an experience of more than 25 years in the field of education. And during this tenure, she has served many renowned schools of Ghaziabad, that is Delhi Public School, Khaitan Public School, Modern School, as HOD, PGT, Head Mistress, and Principal. She is a postgraduate in English and BA from Lucknow University. She is passionate about teaching and writing, and she is a blogger, and her blog is sagorights.com. Her articles have been published in many local and international newspapers as well. She feels that learning is an ongoing process where every individual gets innumerable opportunities to learn till his last breath. We welcome you on board, Sagorika ma'am. And when we talk of English, what I personally feel is English is the best tool to provide good opportunities to all learners to learn. And good English, that is well-spoken and well-written English will open more doors than a college degree. So how to teach English to our students? Now we look forward to you for an enriching session. Over to you, Sagorika ma'am. Uh, Thank you. Right for your presentation. Thank you, ma'am, for such a nice introduction. Thanks a lot. Now, let's not waste time and begin with the presentation today. So today's topic is pedagogy of teaching English for classes 6 to 8. Dear teachers, the highlights for today's presentation, just have a look on this. Importance of English, we will know. Then approaches, then strategy and pedagogy, methods of English teaching, lesson planning, pedagogy, learning outcomes, integrated approach, learning objectives, subject enrichment, activities. We will also know about different techniques of assessment, smart management of resources and time, challenges which you teachers often face and tips to cope up those challenges. And finally, a quick feedback. So let's start with the presentation. 
if i talk about the importance of english why english what is the importance of english so in a country in a multilingual country like india english is a symbol of people's aspirations for quality in education it helps in full participation in national and international levels as it is an international language it also helps an individual to get good job opportunities globally and it changes the perception of people around you if you know english if you can speak in english properly so this is the importance of english in our country and the, if i go into the variety and range of english teaching in india the teaching and learning of english today is characterized by a diversity of schools and linguistic environments supportive of english acquisition and pervasive classroom procedures of teaching a uh, language in and in order to get success in the examination now approaches english teaching in india how it started initially it started with the traditional grammar translation method then in the late 1950s structurally graded syllabi were introduced the idea was that the teaching of language could be systematized by planning its inputs just as the teaching of a subject such uh, as arithmetic or you can say physics the structural approach was sometimes implemented as the direct method with an insistence on monolingual classrooms so there was the teacher she used to speak she used to teach in a direct method in the monolingual monolingual english classrooms then gradually by the late 1950 uh, 1970s structural method yielded to the cognitive claims of chomsky for language as a mental organ and got fragmented into two ways into structures and the second one is into skills the emphasis now shifted to teaching the language use in meaningful context and that is called communicative competence and thus arose the importance of making curriculum now strategy and pedagogy if i talk about the strategy and pedagogy so before that we need to understand the aim of english teaching what should be our aim when we teach english in the class we must think that what the child is going to get after this what is the use of teaching it so the aim of english teaching is in india is to help students to acquire a practical command of english students should be able to understand english they should be able to speak english they should be able to read english and write english so the practical principle of moving from known to unknown this should be the aim of english teaching if it is clear then we will we can move forward towards the strategy and the pedagogy now methods of teaching english there are several methods you can take up any of these methods five of the methods i have noted here by, by which we can uh, give our uh, teachings to the students we can take up the classes in english the first and the foremost is the most commonly used that is the grammar translation method it is also called as a classical method in uh, in older days it was this method was used so what is this method it places language on a foundation of alphabets spellings and writing systems it assumes translation to be the main or only procedure for learning of vocabulary so importance more stress is given on this translation method it also assumes that word and sentence structure is to be attained mainly or solely through the memorizing of grammar rules so in the grammar translation method two things are given more importance that is one is the translation method and the second one is the 
memorizing of grammar rules. Then comes the direct method, which is more natural. And this is the method where the teacher doesn't give any grammar rules. Instead, it uh, the teacher teaches the students and students acquire it, learn the language naturally. What is that? The teaching, the, uh, teaching concepts and vocabulary is done through real life objects and other visual materials. And the focus is more on the question answer patterns. Now comes the bilingual method. Now bilingual method, it allows teachers and the pupils to use two languages. What are the two languages? One obviously is the target language, English, and the other one is the mother tongue, by which the child can uh, comprehend the concepts more easily. So this is also a method by which the teacher teaches in the class explain the basics of the subject. Then comes the structural and situational approach. In this, the focus is both on vocabulary and reading. And it becomes a salient feature of it. The situations are given, structural approach is taken care of, and the teacher teaches accordingly. And finally comes the last method that is communicative language teaching that is also called as CLT. Now communicative method focuses on language as a medium of communication. So it is the ability of applying the language principles to produce grammatical sentences and understand when, where and to whom the sentences are used. So when the child understands that when the sentence has to be used, where he has to speak certain particular sentence and of uh, to whom these sentences has to be uh, spoken, then he can more easily, when he understands these, then he can more easily learn it. And this approach is uh, more student oriented or you can say pupil oriented because it keeps in mind the interest of the students, the needs and interest of the students. So these are the five uh, different methods by which you can teach uh, English in your class. Now coming towards the next topic that is the lesson planning. The shape of the curriculum. We need to understand the before making the lesson plan we have a set of curriculum. So languages are learned implicitly by comprehending and communicating messages either through listening or reading for meaning. And for this, it is suggested to have a comprehensible input rich curriculum that lays the foundation for spoke, uh, spontaneous language growth with the understanding of spoken and written language. Once you set the curriculum, once the curriculum is set, there comes the need of proper planning of the lessons. Because without a proper planning, you cannot randomly go to the class and start teaching. You have to be well prepared. And that preparation comes when you make a proper lesson plan. So the whole of lesson plans becomes very vital. Now, if I talk about the lesson plan, what is a lesson plan? You teachers have been making so many lesson plans every day. And you are well versed with it. So lesson plans means a teacher's planning for teaching an individual lesson. Suppose you want to teach noun in the class. What should be your strategy? What should be your plan to execute that particular topic in the class? That is called a lesson plan. Now it requires the creativity of the teacher. A teacher's individual plan, his elements of creativity and innovation are reflected in a lesson plan. So how best you are in teaching is quite uh, reflected in the way you make the lesson plan. So while making the lesson plan, each teacher should use all his or her creativity, intellect and knowledge to develop an innovative lesson plan. See, if you make a um, perfect lesson plan, having innovative ideas, in that with uh, showing your full creativity, 
your lesson plan becomes the perfect one. So let us know about the key elements of a perfect lesson plan. These are the points which you need to keep in your mind while making a proper lesson plan. And what are they? First is you have to decide who are the target groups. Means which class you are going to take. The lesson plan which you are making, this is for which class. Once you decide that, once you put that in the lesson plan, once you mention that, then comes what is the context of learning. That means which topic you are going to teach in the class. So you need to mention the class, then you need to mention the topic. Then comes what should be the learning outcomes of the lesson. So if you are teaching a chapter, particular chapter, what would be the learning outcomes of that particular chapter that you have to keep in mind and jot it down in the lesson plan. You have to mention it in that. Then comes what should be the learning objectives of the lesson. What are the objectives you want to acquire while going through the lesson, entire lesson. Then comes the importance of resources and materials. Whichever material you require, you have to mention that in the lesson plan. What are the resources you are using while uh, delegating your lectures or while teaching a topic, particular topic in the class. Then comes what other parts of the curriculum can it integrate? Can your lesson plan integrate other subjects like art, values, skills, sports? This you have to keep in your mind. So make a lesson plan which can integrate values which can integrate art, skills and sports. Then comes time required. How much time will you require to uh, teach a particular topic? Suppose you uh, are teaching direct, indirect or reported speech in class 8th. Now you have to plan it beforehand uh, how many periods you will require for completing that particular reported speech in class 8th. It can be uh, four periods. It can be more than four periods. So you have to plan accordingly. Time is very important factor. You have to mention that a um, period of 40 minutes. We have to calculate it. How many periods you are getting in a week. And accordingly, you can adjust your, uh, make your lesson plan and teach in the class. Then comes the educational strategies to be adopted, learning activities and tools to be used. So what are the strategies you are um, adopting while teaching that particular topic in the class? Uh, which technique you are using? Then what are the learning activities you are putting inside it? Means uh, obviously you have to keep some of the other activities to uh, just uh, either you uh, need it for explaining the topic or to judge or evaluate the children, their understanding. So learning activities. And finally, the tools to be used, whichever tools you are using in that particular activity. And then comes assessment strategies. One you, once you finish up the topic, you finish up the chapter in the class, then comes the uh, assessment, the evaluation portion, how best you can do it. So all these points should be there in a perfect lesson plan. Now coming to the expectations from a teacher for lesson plan. So what are the expectations from a teacher when he makes a lesson plan of his or her own? The board envisions that each teacher must have the capacity to make his or her own lesson plan for each lesson to be taught. These lesson plans must be innovative based on the experiential learning and preferably integrate, they must integrate art, values, skills and sports in the pedagogy. And then when once the lesson plan is made, a single lesson plan can be uh, combined into the annual pedagogical plan of the teacher. So these are the expectations from a teacher for a perfect lesson plan. You can also uh, go through this circular mentioned over here. Um, 
dated March 2019 CBSE circular where CBSE has issued certain guidelines related to the pedagogical plans. So now we move on to the next pointer that is pedagogy. What is a pedagogy? Pedagogy is the manner in which a teacher teaches his or her learners to acquire certain competencies as stated by the outcomes of the learning. Learning outcomes I mentioned. Now pedagogical plans are actually in other words if you say pedagogical plans are vision to action plans. So it imbibes all thinking, preparation and steps of execution involved in making each stage, each stage of curriculum transaction for a meaningful and comprehensive, uh, which becomes a meaningful and comprehensible for students, where uh, it starts, it can begin with setting up of learning objectives, preparing lesson plans, transaction, assessment, identifying outcomes of learning of each student. And that can be done through assessment. It can be in the form of a weekly flowchart or a monthly flowchart or can be an annual flowchart. So if I say in accordance with the NCF National Curriculum Framework 2005, the constructivist approach is followed where the child is placed at the center of learning and approach and the teaching is around him. And the approach believes that children learn best through experiencing and reflecting on the topics, concepts being taught in the class. And thus, the concept of experiential learning or learning by doing comes into the picture. Now, if I talk about the learning outcomes, we have understood the pedagogy. Now, how to make the learning outcomes and what are exactly the learning outcomes. So learning outcomes are the reference points for teachers, for parents, children and others to understand the learning process, the progress, how it is done. They are the declarations that portray significant and essential learning that has been achieved by learners and that can be reliably demonstrated at the end of the term. So in other words, learning outcomes recognize what the learner knows, will get to know and can do, can know or can do by the end of the class. So if you uh, are concerned about how to write down the learning outcomes, learning outcomes for classes one to eight have been prepared by NCRT, you can always refer to that and uh, get into that and adopt ma uh, as many learning outcomes from there. CBSE also asks uh, to, uh, it wants the teachers to adopt those learning outcomes mentioned in the NCRT. Now comes examples of learning outcomes set by NCRT. I have taken one example uh, of the learning outcomes. Uh, made by NCRT for class 8th. Suppose a particular topic is taught, uh, a chapter is taught in class 8th where the students are taught about how to conduct a school program and the, uh, it is all about um, managing, about conducting a certain annual function or any other sports function. So at the end of the chapter, what do you understand? What are the, what do you think that learners should um, get to know what are the learner, uh, learning outcomes of the chapter. After that chapter, the learner responds to instructions and announcements in school and public places because in the chapter he has already gone through. Now he responds to instructions and in announcements in school as well as in the public places. Then comes he can uh, he introduce guests in English. He can interview people by asking questions based on the work they do. And then the learner engages in conversations in English with people from different professions. He also uses 
polite expressions to communicate like uh, may i come in or sentences like polite expressions where he can use and then finally he can speak short prepared speech in the morning assembly cbsc has given uh, mentioned in this circular you can see it is mentioned over here uh, dated um, 18th january the circular number is f1028 18th january 2019 cbsc has issued directions to all affiliated schools for adopting learning outcome so it is mandatory for all the cbsc schools uh, and uh, the teachers to mention learning outcomes in their lesson plan now comes integrated approach when i am talking about integrating art values skills sports so how to do that and what is the use of integrating these subjects in your language uh, english language art integrated learning the model is defined to promote experiential learning every learner is provided opportunities to go through the art experience both in the form of visual as well as in the form of performing arts to understand and learn different subjects art integrated activities in english teaching how can you uh, imagine that how this if you in, uh, in integrate art in your subject in your english teaching how it will help it uh, encourages the use of art related vocabulary you can help them you can give them a task an activity to draw a painting and describe it in your own words this way you can take a uh, give them an activity they will make a uh, painting and they can uh, describe it in their own words so art is also integrated in your teaching then you can allow students to explain their thoughts their ideas and feelings through drawing and labeling you can give them some uh, whatever drawing they have made or paintings they have made you can ask them call the students in the class and ask them to explain it in your own words what you wanted to express in the form of this painting so this way they can explain they can come out with their uh, thoughts their innovative ideas and feelings whatever they comes to their mind they are free to express it so here you have integrated art along with the uh, teaching of the subject english where you are encouraging the child to speak in english you are encouraging the child to draw a painting so both the uh, skills are uh, integrated both the subjects are integrated express what your ideas and thoughts through your performance like i said performing arts these were the examples the above given ones were the examples of visual, uh, visual arts if i talk about the performing arts you can uh, ask them to perform in the class and express their own ideas and thoughts in the best way they can so this way you can integrate art in the in your teaching then if i talk about the integration of values in english teaching what are values and why they are so important so value teaches them the best way to live that can be beneficial to the individuals as well as to the society so if you give good values to your children it helps them in their life throughout their life value education also helps the students to become more responsible and sensible it helps them to understand the perspective of life in a more better way and they become successful in their life if they have good values so how to inculcate those values in your subject this project with this inculcation of values in your uh, subject you can uh, through this project you can transmit values required for the self fulfillment and integration in the society and what are the values you can inculcate you can uh, inculcate honesty goodness simplicity and tolerance respect for people environment and things 
responsibility and solidarity to promote tolerance and acceptance you have to increase students interest towards different social and cultural realities and facilitate their communication so this way you make them aware of their surroundings you make them feel concerned about their surroundings their environment and through interaction students also learn how to participate how to express their ideas their own ideas and uh, thereby learn to uh, listen to others so this way you can put all the good values you can inculcate all the good values through your subject and it becomes mind it if you integrate art if you integrate values in your subject in your in the teaching of your subject your teaching goes to the next level then if i talk about the integration of skills in english teaching so what type of skills skills can be thinking skills social skills communication skills research skills and self management critical thinking problem solving innovation creativity entrepreneurship learning to learn then self awareness and self direction and the basic four primary skills if i we all know in english how we learn those skills we when we learn the subject the language we begin with listening we begin uh, then we transfer uh, move on to the uh, speaking skill then reading and then writing these four primary skills can also be integrated through various activities so you can give them a situation and you can ask them to use any of these uh, four skills or you can ask them any of the um, uh, uh, skills mentioned above like give them a situation ask them to think and analyze and then express in their own words so this way you can inculcate the skills you can integrate in uh, skills various skills in your uh, subject teaching now comes the integration of sports in english teaching many a times we are worried that how can we integrate sports in the teaching of the language subject yes it is possible and mind it if you do it you will enjoy teaching in the class how can you do it so first of all i want to just tell you if you uh, integrate sports in your english teaching what happens the teaching becomes very interesting as it motivates the children to take part in the sports they get interested in it and they comprehend uh, well the topic which you want to teach them the activities you can take you can just choose a game and uh, in the class you can do it as uh, divide the whole class into two groups one group can participate in the sports uh, what whichever sport you want to take and the um, uh, other group will be uh, watching the uh, entire sport in the game and then uh, ask uh, choose one or two students to give a commentary in english whatever instructions you are giving that should be in english so that children understand they comprehend the language watch uh, and uh, they follow it accordingly you can even at the end of the game you can even give them a task give a task to the students who have participated in the game to pen down their um, feelings or expressions how they felt how they enjoyed the entire game and to the um, students who were watching the entire game uh, give uh, give them again another uh, the same task to pen down their feelings their expressions how they felt throughout the game so this way you can integrate sports in the english teaching and mind it if you do it in this way your children get uh, they they are uh, they get so much motivated they will never uh, feel like to miss your class now coming towards the learning objectives what are learning objectives learning objectives are the expected goal of a curriculum course and lesson the curriculum is planned 
to meet the desired learning objectives, class-wise and the subject-wise. So every lesson should include the learning objectives. This is very, very important. Now, learning objectives, when I'm talking about learning objectives, we all know Bloom's taxonomy. So we, I need to mention here, Bloom's taxonomy, you can see on the slide here, the uh, initial learning objectives as per Bloom's taxonomy proposed by Bloom, Professor Bloom in the year 1956 was somewhat like this, where the pyramid goes from knowledge to comprehension, then application, then analysis, then synthesis, and finally evaluation. So Bloom's taxonomy is what? It is a classification of different objectives and skills that educators set for their students. That is the learning ob uh, objectives. The taxonomy was proposed in 1956 by Benjamin Bloom, an educational psychologist at the University of Chicago. So the six levels which I showed you just now in the uh, uh, pyramid in the previous slide, knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. All these three, uh, six levels were used to structure the learning objectives, lessons, and assessments. So if I talk about the knowledge, what is knowledge? In that it involves the recognizing or remembering the facts, terms, basics, concepts, or answers without necessarily understanding what they mean. Then comes comprehension, which involves demonstrating an understanding of facts and ideas by organizing, summarizing, translating, generalizing, giving descriptions, and stating the main ideas. And then comes the application, which involves using acquired knowledge, solving problems in new situations by applying acquired knowledge, facts, techniques, and rules. Now, the, after application, it moves on to the analysis, which involves examining and breaking information into component parts, determining how the parts relate to one another, identifying motives or causes, making inferences, and finding evidence to support generalization. So synthesis is the next step where uh, it involves building a structure or pattern from diverse elements. It also refers to the act of putting parts together to form a whole thing. And finally comes the evaluation. Evaluation involves presenting and defending opinions by making judgments about information, the validity of ideas or quality of work based on a set of criteria. Now Bloom's taxonomy is, uh, is what that I mentioned just now. Learning objectives as per 2001, which now we are following, are somewhat like this. Remember, first comes remember, then comes understand, then comes apply, then comes analyze, then comes evaluate, and finally create. So if I talk about remembering, remembering is what? It is retrieving recognizing and recalling relevant knowledge from long-term memory. Understanding, in understanding it is actually the constructing meaning from oral, written or any graphic messages through interpreting, exemplifying, classifying, sometimes summarizing, through inferring, comparing and many a times by explaining. Then comes applying. Applying is what? Carrying out or using a procedure for executing or implementing. And then it comes to analyzing. Breaking material into constituent parts 
determining how the parts relate to one another and to an overall structure or uh, purpose through differentiating, organizing and attributing. Next comes evaluating. In evaluating, you make the uh, making the judgments based on the criteria and standards through checking and critiquing and finally creating. What is that? In this, it is actually putting elements together to form a coherent or functional whole, reorganizing elements into a new pattern or structure through generating, planning or producing. Now, while making the learning objectives of a particular lesson, what are the pointers you keep you have to keep in your mind? First, set out clear and achievable objectives for the inclusion of all, all the pointers which we have just now seen. Then break down the objectives and lesson plan into progressive steps to facilitate progress and learning covering the core concept according to the understanding of the ideas. Then comes selecting, selecting and developing and using a wide range of resources to meet the various needs of all. And using the activities providing different sensory approaches and outcomes. Now, in short, if I say just brushing up these pointers first is curriculum curriculum is the sum total of a planned set of educational experiences to be provided to the students then comes learning objectives which describe the expected goal of a curriculum course lesson or activity in context of provable skills or knowledge acquired through instruction by a student. The curriculum is planned to meet the uh, desired learning objectives, class-wise and subject-wise. And then comes the learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are the outcomes of learning that can be demonstrated by the learner at the end of the particular chapter, class, course, or subject, or uh, the textbook, or completion of a topic. So, if you are teaching tenses in the class, at the end of the chapter, at the end of the topic, what should be the learning outcomes? Just mention in the chat box what you think the first, uh, first thing the child uh, must know or comprehends after you explain the whole topic. Then is designing subject enrichment activities that is experiential learning according to the new education policy nep 2020 special emphasis is given on learning by doing this we all know and what is that learning by doing the child is given a situation where the child is taught a certain topic or uh, the uh, uh, chapter uh, and that it is not by just reading out the topic or reading out the entire chapter or going to the class and just starting with the explanation of the grammar rules and all that. No, it is a procedure where the child learns by doing it on his own self. The concept of experiential learning is based on the fact that when a child listens, he forgets. Mind it, I repeat this point. When a child listens, he can forget. When he learns, he remembers. But when he does, he himself takes part in it. He does it. He understands it. And it remains in his memory for a longer period of time. Researchers proved that when a student carries, uh, when a student carries out physical activities, instead of just listening to a lecture, you just, you can uh, very well see this procedure. Uh, teaching by just reading out the topic or reading out the chapter in the class make, makes the class totally dull. And you do not know how many students understand. 
But instead of that, if you uh, just force the children to participate in the learning process, he understands well. In short, learning by doing helps a student to comprehend well, to uh, retain the same for a longer period of time. And that is why we think, we consider that the importance of activities is there in the uh, teaching learning process. Through activities, you can very well uh, uh, make the students participate and uh, thereby make them learn by doing. Now, how to design an activity? You, while designing an activity, following are the points you need to keep in your mind. First is objectives of the activity. What are the objectives of the activity? Means after conducting a certain activity in the class, what is your objective? What you want your students to understand or comprehend? Then comes skills and values to be enhanced. Of course, it is an integrated learning. So what are the skills your children are learning or acquiring? What are the values you are giving through this activity? That also you have to keep in your mind. Then comes time required. Very, very important factor. Because most of the time we are uh, very much concerned about the completion of the syllabus in proper time. So time restraint is there always. You need to keep this thing in your mind that your whichever activity you are conducting in the class must complete in the, the time you have given for that activity. Because if you take more than one day in just conducting an activity, it loses its impact on the children. And then it uh, you also feel like to just finish it off uh, for the sake of conducting an activity. So uh, think about it um, uh, while, while designing an activity, choose such activity which you can very well uh, complete within the period. Then comes the mode. How will you conduct that activity? The mode of the activity. Then comes material required. You have to keep all these things in your mind and well prepared before conducting an activity in the class. So the materials you will require, you cannot just uh, conduct a, an activity in the class without having any materials. And, uh, and uh, just now in that class only, you are uh, asking the children to prepare this uh, prop or that prop. No, it cannot be done. So materials, whichever you require, you make it beforehand. You have to keep in your mind that what are the uh, materials uh, you require while conducting an activity. Then pre-preparation of the teacher, which is very much required. You need to be prepared beforehand. Then comes worksheets and materials. At the end of the activity, just to get to know that whether your children have understood, they really enjoyed the activity or not, you give them a worksheet and uh, just evaluate it, find, uh, get their feedback. Then the stepwise procedure, you also need to have a proper guidelines or instructions of conducting uh, that particular activity in the class. And finally, the learning outcomes. All these points should be there. You have to keep in your mind while designing a particular activity. Now, if I talk about English speaking activities, these are the activities you can very well conduct in the class uh, in order to enhance their speaking skills. How? Uh, the first one is the conversational method, conversational English, which is based on situations. You can uh, um, uh, call students uh, near your table and uh, give them a situation, call two or three students, give them a situation and ask them to uh, converse in a dialogue form that is conversational uh, method. Next is the role play method. Uh, teaching a particular drama or a play from the book uh, by just reading it out and explaining in the class uh, won't be more effective. Instead of that, if you just make it a role play activity, give some characters to uh, assign some characters to the children and make them read 
and uh, modulate their voices accordingly according to their own roles that is a role play activity and that helps a lot uh, in comprehending the chapter and you can do both the things you can teach that particular top uh, chapter that play in the class uh, and you are at the same time conducting an activity also then comes tongue twisters you can give them tongue twisters describing people uh, give them some uh, renowned person's name and ask them to just describe them describing people then just a minute it is also called as jam where uh, teachers can, uh, can randomly call any any student and give them any topic it, it is a sort of an extempore where they uh, just open the chat they are given a chat and they open the chat and they find out the topic any topic you give to them and you, uh, they are given one minute time to think about it and then they have to speak without any preparation whatever ideas come to their mind at that particular point of time they have to just express it and that they have to finish it in just one minute this type of activity is called just a minute then comes speaking cards flash card activity and finally the spin and speak uh, activity where you can uh, just make a, a spin uh, uh, you can just show them with a spinning uh, wheel and uh, wherever the pointer shows whatever is written whichever the topic is they have to speak on that topic so that is the this these many ways you can uh, just uh, introduce in the form of an activity you can take up in the activity next comes English writing activities. Writing activities in order to enhance their writing skills. You can take up these activities in the class where you can give them some creative writing. You can ask them uh, to write uh, uh, on any topic and uh, express their best, how creatively they can make that writing. Then comes content writing, give them a product uh, uh, name of a product and then ask them to write whatever they have in their mind in that particular um, uh, writing that is content writing then comes story writing very very innovative method in which you can give them a uh, topic either you can give them a topic or a straight away question or in fact you can also give them um, a, a tagline and ask them to write down uh, a story of their own now uh, here they will use their uh, brain they will think about it they will formulate a story because every one of us is a good storyteller minded so uh, this way they can use their creativity they can write down the story writing and then comes debate writing debate is an essential part of one's life so Children must also know how to participate in a debate. So for that, they need to understand how to write down a debate. So give them a topic where they can write either in favor or against the topic. So debate writing, speech writing, article writing, and letter writing. So these are the different types of activities you can give them in the class for, classes, for the students of classes 6 to 8th. Now, if I talk about the activities, the experiential learning activities, in the creative writing, imitation and parody can be taken up. You can give them, uh, uh, take the help of their innovative ideas, how best they can imitate, they can make a parody. Then you can give them the um, activity of editing and creating an edition a paragraph can be given to them where the students can have uh, they have to edit it uh, paraphrase it uh, summarize a chapter this way you can give them a task then research methods and databases you can give them some topics to search uh, and uh, research it and then uh, collect the uh, databases and then hearing authors read and talk about their own work this is also another type of uh, experiential learning where they can hear the authors talking about their own great authors talking about their own books their own way of writing 
their interests. Then another one is reviewing literary work for academic or for popular audiences. And finally, recreating a particular historical context to illuminate a literary text. Now comes the assessment part. Once you teach, you complete your entire topic in the class. Now is the point that how your students have, how well they have comprehended. This is an important factor which every teacher has to do it in one or the other ways. The assessment is important to measure learning outcomes whether the children have achieved the learning outcomes, whether your teaching is so good that you have uh, uh, managed to get uh, cover or uh, managed to get those learning outcomes which you have mentioned in the lesson plan. So this is very much important. The board also continues to strengthen assessment and evaluation practices to eventually achieve the competences for all its students. So assessments are for, of two kinds, less formal and more formal. A teacher should aim to use all kinds of assessments. Portfolios is basically a very good example of assessment of learning and assessment for learning. It must be utilized accordingly in the class at all levels. So assessment of learning, if I talk about, it involves looking at assessment information at the end of the teaching and learning process. So when you are teaching, when you have completed the topic, at the end of that topic, at the end of that entire teaching, you have you can assess them and that is that is the learning assessment of learning. Now while the child is being taught the chapter, the topic, whatever procedures, you take to assess for learning that is assessment for learning assessment for learning embeds assessment processes throughout the teaching and learning method and it constantly helps the uh, teacher to evolve and judge his teaching strategy now this is a case study i have uh, taken you can just look into this sample questions for different levels. So suppose the uh, study reveals John gets up early in the morning. He goes to school every day. He is a very intelligent student. He is well-mannered child. He loves to help others and teachers love him a lot. Now to attain the objectives, first is first type of question you can give that can uh, uh, get the idea how much they remember from this case study. So where does John go to every day? Obviously the answer will come if it's a direct question. Answer will come if the, uh, John goes to school every day. Then comes understanding. When I'm talking about understanding whether the child has understood whatever uh, part is mentioned in the passage. So the question is John is not an early riser. Yes or no? This is not a direct question. The child will have to read the passage and then find out the answer in and using his own understanding. Then his then the next one is applying. Once he understands how well he applies. So the question can be like this. Which qualities are required for being a good student? So here the child after reading the passage can understand, can write, uh, he can apply his uh, understanding and write the answer in this way like uh, a, ch a person, a uh, stu good student is a student who um, studies well, who can help others, he is very, very well mannered, such type of answers can come. Then finally the analyze. Does John help other students in their studies? How do you think he would react if any student seeks his help in solving a numerical in physics? So this way in the analyzing portion, he has to use his uh, understanding, how well he understood and, and analyze it in a different situation. So this way, the difficulty level 
increases while framing a set, set of questions for evaluating the students. Now the smart management of resources. A teacher can make his class interesting by managing his resources and time smartly. How can he do that? He can take the help of these resources. Now, what are these resources? First is the visual aids, visual resource. You can take the help of overhead projectors, boards, pictures, flashcards, white or black boards, then audio aids. In audio aids, you can <clears throat> just take CDs, audios uh, recorded on internet, and then uh, some music, then audio visual aids, where the child can listen and uh, see also using recording recorded videos. You can show them videotapes, DVDs during the lessons. Students do not just hear the language. They see, see it too. And when they see it too, this helps them to comprehend what actually they are learning. Now, how these aids help? These aids, these resources, they help the students to comprehend the lesson taught in the class. They, these uh, aids, they give the students, they get the, uh, the students get a chance to see the language in use, practical use, as well as they can hear it. It also helps with the understanding and interpreting as a whole, interpreting the entire text as a whole. And teacher should always be well prepared before conducting a class with all the resources he or she requires beforehand. I told you uh, previously also that whenever a teacher wants to delegate his lecture or take up a topic in the class, he should be well prepared beforehand. So if you are using certain resources, you have to keep it well prepared beforehand so that uh, you do not uh, waste your time while conducting the activity or while teaching a certain topic in the class. Then comes smart management of time. A well-planned class requires perfect management of time. This is very much required, I told you initially also. Teacher must allocate the syllabus as per the periods he or she gets in a week. So what are the tips of management of time? The teacher should be smart enough in get in setting the uh, setting clearly all the goals and objectives. So you should have a clear uh, concept that the goals should be achieved, the objectives should, should be learning objectives should be achieved. Then he should be smart enough to plan the time beforehand. So plan your time beforehand. Then make perfect lesson plan. I have given you the pointers. Then be smart about marking when you are mark, marking the children. You have to be very smart. Then be smart with the technology you, uh, tools. Whatever technology you are using, you have to be, learn that. You have to be smart enough so that you do not waste your time in the class. Then if you feel that certain activity or cer certain technology is taking much of your time, just eliminate it with the some other one which takes less time so eliminate the time wasters then practice being mindful of what you do and enjoy while teaching in the class very very important when you teach in the class your teaching can become very interesting once you enjoy teaching in the class so it is mandatory now there are certain challenges which as a teacher you face Challenges can come from students. Challenges can come from your own self also. So uh, let us just look at these uh, challenges quickly. Challenges from students. For an English teacher, there are times when you are teaching in the class and students lack their vocabulary mastery. So they might not understand what you are trying to uh, teach them in the class. So this is, uh, in, and that is also in simple English. Then low concentration. 
many a times language subject becomes very boring for the uh, students because they lose their concentration in that and as a result of that they there is a low motivation when they do not feel like motivated in the class you also feel uh, very much in a uh, in such a situation how you continue with the chalk topic when you face that children are losing their motivation so lack of discipline as a result of that lack of discipline is there and uh, they get distracted uh, and you feel very much challenged to complete the particular topic in the class in that set of time then boredom and finally speaking problem there may be some students who um, want to express but they have lack of words they cannot express properly in english so these are the challenges you can face while teaching uh, taking up the english class uh, and teaching the subject english then comes challenges from teachers for teachers a uh, teacher can then themselves face some challenges from uh, their own self what are what are those shortage of teachers training many a times we uh, find that due to lack of teachers training teachers are not able to understand or uh, use uh, new innovative methods in their teachings so because of the shortage of teachers training then comes teachers language proficiency issue this is also a major factor then limited mastery of teaching methods uh, you have adopted one method only and you are uh, well acquainted with that method and you do not want to change uh, or uh, replace it with a better method so that is also a uh, challenge you need to uh, explore more uh, innovative ways to teach the subject then teachers unfamiliarity to high tech uh, technology you need to learn there are many there are many a times teachers do not know uh, to use the technology and this creates a, a lot of problem in the class teachers lack of professional development yes then inadequate resources and facilities and obviously the time constraint you are always under the pressure of completing the syllabus well on time so these are the challenges now what are the solutions to cope up these challenges first is reforming attitude reforming your own attitude applying various teaching methods and techniques if you feel that your Uh, that your method of teaching is not giving a good result change it apply new various methods then improving resources and facilities then matching students level and learning situation while teaching a student of class 6 you have to come to down to the level of mental level of the uh, class 6 students and your teaching strategy would be totally different when you go to class 8 using and providing dictionary very important i would suggest all the english teachers to make it a mandatory point to ask your children to keep a pocket dictionary in their bag and uh, you can conduct surprise activities dictionary activities in the class any day and um, you give them some words Uh, and give them the time uh, limit and in uh, 30 seconds they have to find out search dictionary find out the meaning of a particular word so this this creates an interest uh, in them and they feel like to consult dictionary then making use of available resources and facilities then providing motivational feedback looking for appropriate methods or materials and finally teachers self reflection might be quite helpful in coping the english teaching challenges in classroom situations so these are the uh, solutions which you can which can help you in coping up with the challenges which you face in your daily teaching periods now last is the quick feedback to improve learning so following are the methods which you can take up in the class first is the discussion of question paper very much required uh in immediately after the test you can discuss the question paper in the class you can uh, just uh, make them uh, 
uh, re, uh, tell the answers in the class. You can also conduct quiz in the class. Then uh, after that, you can also um, take up this activity of cross checking or peer checking. If there is less time, you can do this. You can just, uh, in order to get the quick feed, uh, feedback, you can do the cross checking or peer checking, interchange their notebooks and then doubt clearing session. So keep a doubt clearing session at the end where the ch children can come out with their doubts and clear their um, problems and discuss it well with you. So for teachers, teachers, you are the torch bearers. You are the makers of the next generation. Don't forget this. It is the responsibility of the teacher to provide right information and knowledge to his or her students. Enjoy your teaching in the class. Find innovative ways to teach and understand your students well. And remember one thing, together we can and together we will. We will bring the change in our students' lives. So that was all about uh, today's uh, presentation. I am very thankful that Kriti Prakashan and Digi Nurture, that they have organized such a wonderful series of online capacity building workshops for teachers to empower them in pedagogy of teaching various school subjects through its pedagogical enhancement program, Urja. So this is really a great venture. And I feel myself to be extremely proud of being a part of it. Thank you teachers for being there with me throughout the session. Thank you ma'am.